Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of The Peahen's Ponderings, a podcast for fiber artists. I'm your host, TJ King. This podcast is sponsored by The Spanish Peacock, a veteran-owned micro-business based out of Jefferson, Maryland. And now, a word from our sponsor. Coefficient of friction. In today's episode, I'm going to provide a review of some stunningly beautiful teacups that I've absconded with for supported spinning purposes, because that's just kind of how I roll. So if you're listening to this podcast through Apple or Google podcasting service or whatever your favorite podcasting service is, you're definitely going to want to check out the YouTube version as well. So you can actually see these bowls. They really are very beautiful. If you can't for whatever reason, um, you'll still get a lot of good information out of this podcast because I'm not just going to review the bowls, teacups, but also talk about generally speaking things to look for in a supported spinning bowl. So um, the, (laughs) I can't pronounce this. Um, The more videos I tried to watch on how to pronounce the name of this company, the more confused I got about the correct pronunciation. So um, I'm going to hold up the name of the box so you guys can see that. And I'll also provide the URL for their website. Um, Best as I can tell or figure, it's Tenmokasu um, or Tenmokasu, Tenmokas, Tenmokasu, something something like that. I'm sorry. Um, It's a term for a style of Japanese pottery, and I believe that's the technique that's used in making these teacups that I'm not using for tea ever, um, even though I do drink a lot of tea. So first off, how on earth did I get the idea to use uh, teacups for supported spinning bowls? Well, um, we now have a Spanish peacock Facebook group, a fan group called the Spanish Peacock Flock. Uh, If you weren't aware of it, it's uh, a group for um, not just supported spinning, not just drop spinning, not just spinning, but basically any fan of Spanish Peacock Fiber Arts tools. You are, uh, if you're on Facebook, you're anybody's welcome to join. And one of the members there was the first one to post this, um, these, this company, a link to their website and suggest using them as um, supported spinning bowls. And of course, we all went absolutely gaga over how beautiful these um, teacups were. A number of people bought them. And so I, you know, I I might have ended up with four of them in order to uh, be able to provide a good review for people who might be also interested in buying some. So you know what to look for. Um, Buying supported spinning bowls online is sometimes a bit of a challenge. But first... A warning, if you go to this URL, you will get ads literally everywhere. So if you don't like um, feeling like Facebook and Google and all these different um, ad-based services are stalking you, you might want to use like an incognito browser or one of those Chrome add-ins that keeps um, advertising from being displayed on your own. This is me drinking tea, not in a beautiful teacup. Anyway, as I was saying, you may want to use a browser that uh, prevents the ads from following you because you will literally see them everywhere once you go to this website. When we were looking at these bowls, it was a couple weeks ago, and they were running an Easter sale. Buy three, get one free. So that is kind of how I ended up with four because you find two that you like. And then you're like, well, if I just got one more then I'd actually get two more. And that's how they get you. Now, first off, it's very important to say, you don't actually need a bowl for supported spinning. There are plenty of um, pictures, videos of people in traditional cultures who either have the tip of their supported spindle just resting straight on the ground or uh, on a lap. You absolutely do not need to have a bowl The bowl helps reduce the friction that you get from the supported spindle tip against whatever surface that you have it resting on. So for instance, um, if I take a supported spindle, um, for those of you who are watching the video version, 
This is Wobbly Boy. He's been in a number of my videos. He's one of my favorites because he's so photogenic. He's also my only spindle that actually has a name, Wobbly Boy. Um, when you spin that spindle, that tip, however small it may be, whatever material it may be made out of, it's going to encounter friction. So when you use a bowl instead of your hand or a tabletop or your lap or your um, the ground next to you, basically the bowl serves to reduce the coefficient of friction. So the amount of effort that it takes to, you know, put the spindle into motion. If you're working on a highly textured surface, it takes more work to flick the spindle and the friction will also slow it down faster. So no, you don't need a bowl, but generally speaking, um, especially with the more American techniques of supported spinning, where we're looking for a lot of momentum in the spindle, you're going to get more of that if you're using a bowl. So the next thing to talk about with supported spinning bowls specifically is what material they're made out of. Um, generally speaking, I have two main materials that I use, ceramic and wood. You can also find bowls that are made out of glass. And I think there are also people who use like metal um, supported spinning bowls as well. Basically, whatever you can find with a very, very um, uh, polished surface will work well. Um, one of my go-tos right now is this little saucer dish. It's got... Um, a very smooth inside interior. You can see from the reflection that it's very highly polished. And I got this for $2 from a thrift store. So I have absolutely no fear about taking this one anywhere. So this is generally the bowl that I take most with me when I'm going traveling, um, running errands, not while I'm driving. <laughs> okay, Mike's the one driving and I'll be supported spinning in the passenger seat. And this is my go-to bowl because it was so affordable. Um, another option, also ceramic. You can also see the very high shine on this one. This one, also not designed as a supported spinning bowl, but it's uh, got lower sides. So that actually can be an advantage um, depending upon the type of spindle you're spinning with. And we'll talk more about that in a second. Um, there are, of course, always wood bowls. The nice thing about wood bowls being that they're very soft. So with a ceramic bowl, you might run into issues where um, your, your wood, if you're running a wood spindle tip, um, will wear down a little bit faster if you're using a ceramic bowl versus a wood bowl because the ceramic is harder. Um, the wood is not quite as hard, so your tip will be more durable. But you don't have to really worry about that because we do have instructions on how to resharpen your spinning tip. You can see a lot of times I don't bother. The, the camera's not going to focus on that, but Wobbly Boy here has a pretty blunted tip. I spin with it just the way it is. Um, the other kind of wooden bowl that I have is one of these stemmed um, lap bowls. Also, some people call them chalice bowls. And the nice thing about buying a bowl that's specifically intended for supported spinning is sometimes you can find it with... Um, I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. Yeah, there we go. There's like a little dimple in the center of that. And what that does is it just keeps the tip of the spindle even more firmly locked in place, which means that you're not going to lose the spindle's momentum to uh, revolution, for lack of a better word, um, around the inside of the bowl. All of its energy is going to go into the rotation because that tip is holding it right in place. I don't have any examples of glass or metal bowls to show, but um, you'd be looking for the same kind of thing there. You just need a very polished surface and a very curved surface to, um, to help the spindle have more momentum. One of the other things to consider when you're in the market for a supported spinning bowl is um, the type of tip. And I already mentioned this briefly um, when talking about the hardness of the tip versus um, the hardness of the bowl because not everybody has wooden tips, obviously. So if you've got a metal tip, like this John Galen spindle, it's uh, very, very sharp. I would be hesitant to use um, this particular spindle in one of my wooden bowls, for instance, for fear it would scratch up the surface um, on the inside of the bowl, creating more texture, therefore more friction for um, other spinning. 
with the ceramic bowls, it definitely works a lot better than it would with a wood bowl. You just have to be very careful not to um, drop it. And don't laugh at me when I say drop it because a lot of times when I'm spinning, there's always this little, if you listen, there's always this little tink at the very beginning because a lot of times when I flick, I'm lifting up the spindle just a little off the bowl and I shouldn't do that. That's actually very hard on the bowl and the spinning tip. But with a ceramic bowl and a metal tipped spindle, that could actually be a real problem. I don't have any spindles that have the metal ball bearing tips, so I can't really offer an opinion about how those would work with a ceramic versus a wood bowl. The other common spindle tip type that you'll run into is a glass tip, like this um, Stephen Willett Russian lace spindle. And if you've been following my blog and my podcast for a while, you'll know that I've had this um, for a while now and still haven't spun on it because I just love it so much and I'm terrified of something happening to it. Um, I did contact the gentleman who makes these glass tips and they are made out of Pyrex, so more durable than just your regular glass, but still I'm terrified of something happening to it. So if and when I ever actually use the spindle, I'll probably use a wooden bowl because um, I would just be terrified of something happening to it if, uh, if it hit the ceramic. It's probably not going to break if I hit the ceramic bowl, but I'd still be just terrified. So you can see it spins perfectly fine in a wooden bowl. Speaking of breaking, I forgot to mention this earlier. One of the reasons that you might want to have a wooden bowl versus a ceramic bowl is breakability. I um, will never take a ceramic bowl to a, a demo or display where I'm over a concrete floor or asphalt because I did have a supported spinning bowl that was specifically made for spinning. My favorite bowl. And I just wasn't thinking. I was at a farmer's market spinning and I stood up and it was in my lap and then it wasn't in my lap. It was shattered on the asphalt. So not a problem if you're running a wood bowl rather than a ceramic bowl. Just a just a tip if you're thinking about what kind of bowl to get. The other thing to think about when you're purchasing a supported spinning bowl online or in person is the shape of the spindle that you're going to be using with that bowl. And the reason I bring this up specifically is um, if you've got a spindle with a really, really wide whorl, like this particular um, Puyak, this was the original Puyak, um, Spanish peacock Puyak, I should say. Um, if you've got a bowl with very high sides, you can run into a situation where the spindle whorl will actually hit the bowl sides and you, you'll lose a lot of momentum that way. So it's definitely not something that you want to um, run into. So if you've got the very, very wide whorl spindle, you definitely want to make sure you find a bowl with low sides. Shallow bowl, basically. And then if you've got one of these like mini Turks that sometimes people will use... Um, supported. I personally will use a Turk primarily supported. This is a um, vintage Jerry Brock um, miniature Turkish spindle. Same kind of thing. When you've got like this particular bowl, I can't even spin the um, miniature Turkish spindle in it. I guess maybe I could turn the arms upside down. Even with the shallower bowl, you could end up with some issues with the sides hitting so in this particular case, if I'm supported spinning with one of these, I would use this bowl because it's got such a small and shallow um, spinning surface or, or bowl surface, I guess, that the arms are not going to get anywhere near hitting that bowl. In fact, when I do some demonstrations later of the specific Ted Mokosu bowls that I purchased, this spindle can't won't show up in any of those because the arms hit the sides on every single one. Wonderful spindle, but that's definitely something to remember to be on the lookout for when you're looking for a bowl to go with a specific spindle. One final consideration when choosing a supported spinning bowl is where that bowl rests. So how you like for um, the spindle and the bowl and your body to all interact. I generally use a bowl, if you couldn't guess from these, um, that sit low in my lap. 
I have what I would consider to be a relatively average torso. I'm five foot six and um, having the bowl on my lap and having an 11 inch spindle, you can't see any of this. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, you'll have to just visualize the bowl in my lap and the spindle in the bowl. It lets me be able to spin with my arms down and my elbows close to my sides because if I had a taller spindle and a taller bowl, my arms would be up here and it would cause issues for my shoulders. Um, I do have rotator cuff issues. So for me, the most ergonomic way to spin is with a roughly 11 inch spindle and the bowl sitting right in my lap. When I use this stemmed lap bowl, it lifts up the uh, spinning tip of the spindle off my lap by about an inch or so. So it makes it slightly less comfortable but sometimes I'll be in a situation where I'm sitting in a chair that's a little bit slanted, so my lap isn't level. Um, if you've seen me at Shenandoah Valley Fiber Festival, for instance, the chair that I sit in there, my lap just is, my lap is just not level, and a ceramic bowl would slide right out of my lap and onto the floor, and that's not okay. So using a supported spindle um, stemmed bowl like this allows me to secure it with my legs so I don't have to worry about it going anywhere. Um, there are also, um, I think they call them yokes, lap yokes. So I don't have one of these to show you, but uh, Dan Tracy Designs has got a, a piece of wood that's curved in such a way that it goes completely over your lap and both legs so that it's just not gonna go anywhere. So depending upon um, the shape of your lap, or how you like to sit. I think those are also more comfortable if you're if you sit cross-legged. Um, that's an option. Another thing that I don't have an example of is um, there are some supported spinning bowls that are actually affixed to a little um, cushion, so like a bean bag basically. And having the bowl sit right in the um, the bean bag makes also makes it more secure to sit in your lap. I believe that's Straddle Creek. Um, has those particular types of bowls and there might be other manufacturers as well. I haven't tried one of those, but they seem like they could work really well if um, you're in a situation where the bowl just seems like it's going to continue slipping out of your lap. So with all that information about how to pick a bowl, it's still very challenging to purchase a bowl online. You know, you can, you can see the bowl, you can evaluate maybe what the texture is like based on how glossy it is. Um, the vendors generally include uh, measurements about the size of the bowl, but until you have that bowl in your hands and you've got your supported spindle with it, you're, you're still not gonna really know things like whether there's a bump at the bottom of the bowl. You'd have to have like a very specific photo because if there's a raised area, a lot of ceramic cups have a raised area in the bottom of the bowl that will prevent the spindle from being able to spin freely because it'll hit that um, bump and it'll mess everything up. And honestly, no matter how clearly they designate what the size is, a lot of times the bowls show up and I'm like, wow, that was not at all what I was expecting. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to do this video is so um, if you were thinking about buying one of these teacups for your own supported spinning, it'll just give you a little bit more context because you'll actually get to see what they look like and we'll talk about some of the features of the various bowls. Now, specifically to this brand, they are based out of Hong Kong. So when you go to make the purchase, if you decide to purchase them, you're gonna have to wait for the shipping from Hong Kong. Uh, our order was shipped FedEx and it only took a couple of weeks so it wasn't as bad of a wait as I was worried it was going to be. Sometimes when we purchase things from China, it's like months later it shows up. But these showed up after a couple of weeks. Um, so it wasn't really that long of a wait. As far as packaging goes, um, I already showed the little box that they come in. Each one of the bowls came in its own box. Very sturdy, latches closed. And you can see inside how thoroughly cushioned it was. So there's absolutely no fear that anything is going to happen to these bowls in transit. And that's extremely important because these bowls are an investment. With the sale that we caught, buy three, get one free. 
Uh, some of the bowls were also already discounted and there was free shipping over a certain dollar amount. So what we paid for the four bowls averaged out to be not that much more than you could buy, um, for instance, a Spanish peacock supported spinning bowl online for. So as far as that goes, they're, they're a little bit of a splurge. I will absolutely say that um, I'm glad that they have the packaging. I will not be taking these um, on road trips or, um, as I was mentioning earlier, anything with a concrete floor or an asphalt surface. These, these bowls are not going anywhere near that. So let's actually take a look at these bowls. First off is Aurora. Aurora is stunningly beautiful. Aurora is not the princess from Sleeping Beauty Disney version, but she could have been. The colors were amazing. The shape works really well in my lap. So it's got that nice curve on the bottom. You can see, hopefully it's very smooth on the inside. So it does not have that uh, bump that I was talking about, which would potentially slow down um, or distract a spindle's movement. But you can also see by how matte the reflections are that it's got a lot of texture to it. And so the challenge with Aurora is that the texture really does increase the amount of friction and slows down the spindles pretty significantly. Uh, it would also cause more wear and tear on those uh, wooden tipped spindles that I showed earlier. So one of the things that you would want to look for, and you'll see this with the other bowls as well, is, is how hard the reflections are coming off of the bowl in the photos that are staged. So you can see that there are lights that are reflecting off of this bowl, but they're, you can't see the shape of the lights in the bowl. And so that indicates that while it's very beautiful, it's not going to be quite as effective as a supported spinning bowl. So let's take a look at how Aurora works with a couple of these uh, supported spindles that I showed you earlier. Wobbly boy with a wooden tip, the John Galen designs with the metal tip, the Spanish peacock puyoc with its extremely wide whorl, and the Stephen Willett with its glass tip. Also, I should point out, I already said this, I know, but I'm going to say it again. The sides are very high on this one. So the, um, the little mini Turk absolutely cannot spin in that one. Any of them. But I just thought I'd mention it again.
so that's Aurora. The next bowl I'm going to discuss is Bloom. Also stunningly beautiful. Now, Bloom has more of a V shape going on. Also still works really well in a lap. And I think I forgot to point out with Aurora that it still has a flat base also. So if you prefer to put your bowl on a table or other hard surface, it works with either. The interior of Bloom also is much um, smaller. The base is a lot smaller. So you end up with less um, movement of the spindle around on the inside of the bowl. This sort of like a, a dimple in a supported wooden supported spinning bowl it helps focus the energy of the spindle in motion in this very small area so you get a very nice spin um comparing it side by side with aurora you see it's got a little bit more of those hard reflections that i was talking about but it still is relatively textured so just something to be aware of when you're um, purchasing a spindle bowl from teacup sorry from tenokosu ten tenokos when you're buying a spindle bowl online <laughs> from whatever source um, again check for that kind of hard reflection to indicate whether it's textured or not because this has a wider shape this would work better with um, a, not just wider but wider and shallower again when compared side by side with aurora um, this would work better with a spindle that has a wide whorl than um, Aurora would. Plus, it's also just gorgeous. The third bowl that I'm going to talk about is lava. So there you can finally see almost like my glasses, right? You can actually see a reflection of each of those two lights that I was mentioning earlier. You can almost see me in the reflection. That's how shiny and glossy the interior of lava is. Now, one of the things that you cannot see in um, the photos, and this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the challenges with buying a spindle bowl online, lava actually has a relatively thick base. You can't see this in the photos, but there's, there's the bottom of the bowl, but then the inside 
it just doesn't go down as close to the bottom as some of the others do. So it actually raises the spindle up a little more than the other bowls that I purchased. Um, of course, I had to get this one because if you, again, follow my blog, follow my podcasts, um, follow me on Instagram, you'll know I love the shade of orange. It's It dominates my spindle collection, honestly. So I had to get a bowl that would go with all those other spindles. So that's why I ended up with lava. Um, in fact, if you saw my tour de fleece spin from last year, this bowl would have been amazing to do all of that spinning and all of that um, photos, photo posing that I did because it just would have gone so beautifully with both the spindles and the fiber. It does have the very nice um, smooth curved interior as I was mentioning earlier, very important to look for. And I will say compared to the other bowls, um, lava feels very solid. Uh, I still wouldn't spin with it over asphalt or concrete, but I'd be less concerned about lava meeting an unfortunate fate than um, I would be about the others. Did I say that correctly? I wouldn't be as worried about lava as I am about the others because it just has a more solid feeling. Now it does have the high sides relatively deep interior so it would be um, a little more challenging for a, a wide world spindle but it worked fine with the Spanish peacock puyoc. Last but not least, Golden Peacock. You had to know we were going to get at least one bowl with Peacock in the name. There was also one called Silver Peacock, but it was sold out. And there might have been another one as well, but Golden Peacock was the one we ended up with. It included an option to have a um, silver blossom on the inside of it. And we opted to not go with that because it was just stunningly beautiful, even as it was, without the extra silver decoration. Uh, as far as the shine goes, you can definitely tell it's got that hard reflection of the lights, like I was talking about earlier. So you know that it's going to be very glossy, very smooth surface for a good spin. And as much as I love the color of lava, um, Golden Peacock has a, a shape that suits my lap better. 
especially if I hold them up side by side, you can see that lava is taller. Like I mentioned, it's got those really high sides, which, ma which makes it slightly more challenging for a, um, a, a bowl or for a spindle with a wide whorl. Um, golden peacock definitely gets around all those issues. And it's just, well, they're all beautiful, but it's, it's especially beautiful with the variations and the colors. I'm going to hold that up to the camera so you can see. It's just, it's gorgeous. Definitely a winner there if you're looking for a, a treat, a splurge, um, as far as a sported spinning bowl goes. You can't even really tell that the spindle is moving. That's how smooth the spin, in, spin is. And, you know, if you've seen these videos or heard me talking about Wobbly Boy before, he's a second. He's got a certain amount of thrum in the tip. But you can't even tell when he's spinning in the golden peacock bowl. So definitely of the four we got, that one is my favorite. So there you have it. Some information about choosing a supported spinning bowl, some guidance about what to look for when purchasing a bowl online, and information about how to totally hijack really fancy porcelain teacups for supported spinning. If you're watching this video on YouTube, definitely like and subscribe. And also leave a comment below if you're using something for a supported spinning bowl that I hadn't considered or haven't mentioned in this podcast or if you've got your own um, favorites as far as places to buy supported spinning bowls, the more we all share, the better we all get. Thanks for spending some time with me today. And remember, you keep making beautiful fiber arts and Spanish Peacock will keep making beautiful tools to help you do so. Thank you. Bye.